Okay, in this particular lesson, what we're going to be looking at is solving systems of equations with technology. So you're often going to see me using this graphing calculator. The nice thing about using a graphing calculator as opposed to by hand is your graphing calculator can get a somewhat exact answer as opposed to by hand where you can only get exact answers of solving systems if they lie in integer values. There's other advantages as well. Um, the first thing that you need to realize, so this says solve the system with technology, round your solutions to the nearest hundredth, is your calculator can only deal with functions in the form of y equals. So in this particular case, both of these functions are going to be, have to um, be placed into y equals form. So let's just do that first. So the first function, we have x squared plus 8y minus 4y minus 16 equals 0. Uh, we can collect these like terms. So we have x squared plus 4y minus 16 equals 0. And I'm going to isolate y by adding 16 and subtracting x squared. So in this particular case, we have 4y is equal to negative x squared plus 16 divided by 4. And we're left with y is equal to negative x squared plus 16 over 4. We don't do not have to put this into vertex form. Your calculator can deal with this particular function. Uh, for our red function, we have the function uh, x plus 2y plus 10 equals 0. So if I isolate y by subtracting 10 and subtracting x, uh, what I'm going to have now is 2y equals negative x minus 10. And after I divide by 2, I have that y is equal to negative x minus 10 all over 2. And again, we do not have to put this into slope-intercept form. We can just leave it in that form as long as y is isolated. Uh, so what we do now is go into the y equals screen. You'll see what I've already done is I have these put in. So this is negative x squared plus 16 all over 4. This is negative x minus 10 over 2. Make sure that your numerator is in brackets, otherwise your calculator gets confused uh, about its order of operations. So that's another important thing about your graphing calculator. Next, once you've done that in your y equals screen, you can press graph, and it might not look pretty. Mine doesn't look pretty because, as you know, we're looking for where these two functions intersect. You can see it intersects off my screen somewhere over here and off my screen somewhere over here. Two ways to deal with that. One is to change your window. So I'll have to see further uh, to the x minimum, which is to the left, and further to the x maximum. I could change those values. Another way is to initially, which won't always give you the proper window, you could press zoom and then zoom standard or 6. What that does is it changes your window from negative 10 to positive 10 on each axis. Uh, it may still not look nice. You'll see that in the next example it doesn't look nice. In this particular case it does. So we can see both intersection points. The way that we find intersections using technology is by pressing second and trace which gets into the calculate menu and we want to find out where they intersect. We're going to have to do this twice. So press 5 and I want to move this little trace bug close to the first intersection and all I'm going to do is press enter, enter, enter as long as it's relatively close and it will do the rest for me. First curve, second curve, guess, enter, enter, enter and there's my solution. So to the nearest hundredth is negative 5.08 and negative 2.46. So that's one of my solutions. Uh, negative 5, <clears throat> negative 5.08 and my other solution negative 2.46. So that is one solution, that coordinate. Uh, now to find the other intersection, what I have to do again is go to second, calculate, intersect. So you have to find each intersection point uh, <clears throat> separately. Sorry, this is taking a little while. You can see that that guy is slowly, slowly, slowly moving over. Move him close to the intersection point. Hit enter, enter, enter. And you can see in this particular case we have 7.08 and negative 8.54. So 7.08 and negative 8.54. There's our two coordinates or solutions to this. Uh, in our final example, what we're going to do is look at a particular word problem and how it applies. Uh, this word problem says... Jared sells shirts at a festival in Yale Town. His total costs are $5 per shirt, plus a fixed fee of $100 to rent the stand for the weekend. His revenue, which is based on a variable pricing scheme, is according to the function d is equal to negative 1 15th and minus 150 squared plus 1500, where d is in dollars earned and n is equal to the number of shirts sold. First of all, what system of equations would you use to represent Jared's revenue and cost? So in this particular case, we already have the revenue function. That revenue function is right here. So his revenue 
is right here. So I'm going to do that in blue. Uh, as far as his cost function goes, we're going to have to come up with that. His costs are $5 per shirt plus a fixed fee of $100 to rent the stand for the weekend. So let's come up with his cost function. His cost function, which is cost, is going to equal $5 per shirt, which is $5 per N, or D, yes, sorry, uh, is, so it's cost, is $5 per shirt, per the number of shirts, plus a fixed fee of 100. As far as his revenue goes, uh, his revenue is equal to D, so I guess we could use D as in dollars here for cost. So this would be D. His revenue is equal to D equals negative 1 15th n minus 150 squared plus 1500. We can put both of these functions into our calculator. Remember, they only deal with y and x. So as I put this in, I'm just going to go to the y equals screen and put these in. My first one is y equals 5x plus 100. And my second function is y equals or d equals negative 1 15th. So I'm going to put that in brackets just so I'm careful. 1 15th times times uh, n, which in this case we can only deal with x, x minus 150 squared plus 1500. Now what you're probably going to assume or maybe notice is that my window needs to be way bigger because this, my vertex, this is in vertex form, is at 150 and 1500. So when I hit graph, I'm probably going to see very little or nothing. Yeah, we see very little. We see just a little line coming up through here. Uh, so what we're going to do is have to expand this a lot. I'm just going to go to the window. We know that the vertex of my second function is at 150 and 1500. So I'm going to assume that I probably have to go to at least, uh, as far as my y-axis goes, I have to go at least up to 1500. So maybe go up to 2000. So my y-max is going to be 2000. Uh, my x-max, I'm just going to double 150. So I'm going to make my x-maximum. Uh, 300. Let's hit graph and see what that looks like. So you'll see that this is going now up to 2000 up here and over to 300 right here. So in this particular case, uh, we can see both intersection points. One of the intersection points happens really close to the y-axis, y and x -axis, axis here, the origin. The other happens up here. So let's go ahead and find the solutions to the nearest hundredth. So uh, to do that again, just press second, trace, intersect. Let's go ahead and find, uh, maybe I'll find this first one way down here. Uh, it's going to go behind the first curve label, but it's still there. So you can see it's getting closer, closer, closer. We saw that the first intersection looked roughly here, so press enter, enter, enter. And we have our first coordinate of, in this case, D, because it's the D axis, D equals 6.87 and 3rd, and, okay, so D equals 6.87. And in this case, N, which represents the number of shirts, we 134.38. Okay, so this represents money, and this represents number of shirts. Okay, uh, so next, sorry, I'm backwards, my bad. Uh, this represents the number of shirts, and this represents the dollars. Sorry, my X and my Y coordinates were a little bit backwards. That felt wrong. Uh, in this next case, what we're going to do again is just press second trace, intersect, and go over to the second curve. Then we'll talk about how this applies to the word problems and what this all means in the last question there, which says, what is the significance of the solutions? Uh, we'll find that out in just one moment. So go close to that intersection, hit enter, 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 and in this case we have the solution 218.12 and 1190.62, 1190.62, okay? So in this particular case, those are the intersections of the cost function and the revenue function. So when it says, what is the significance of the solutions, this is where these solutions is where cost equals revenue. So in other words, he's breaking even here because what it costs him to make and sell the shirts is equaling the money that he's taking in. Uh, whereas if, if you want, you may notice that this revenue curve is above the cost between those two points. So for him to make money, he needs to sell between 
seven shirts roughly and 218 shirts. Then he'll be making money, which is a good sign for him.